what was done to Cat to make him do that? There's a lot of people that have no respect for the game of comedy. And there's a lot of people that, now, what, before I go deeper, I will say that I don't, I, I, it's none of my business. So Orlando Brown is back with more piping hot tea to spill on the murky side of the entertainment industry. And he dropped some real gems in his new interview with Cam Capone News about Cat Williams and the alleged attempts on his life. Now you know how every time Orlando goes on one of these YouTube shows, the reactions are always a mixed bag. Because on one hand, you've got people who are saying nothing Orlando says should be taken seriously. Because he's allegedly dealing with some serious mental issues on top of his substance use. But many others are pointing to the fact that Orlando actually says a lot of things that make sense if you ignore the crazy delivery. Every single mayor needs to figure out what the f they wanna do before I There should be grapes, turnips, vegetables, everything on the streets every day for the homeless to eat. You're making us pay for water, you son of a You're making us pay for grapes, apples, things that God gave us for free. Anyway, on this whole topic of Cat and him being in jeopardy, Orlando said the comedy world is not so funny when you take a peek behind the scenes. And there are a lot of shady and dark things going on. The comedy world is nothing to play with. And since, you know, Richard Pryor left us, God rest his soul, it's more like, you know, everybody's trying to be Richard Pryor, you know, and, and I can't put myself in position to not understand why some people just don't have the, the kind of respect for Cat that they should have. Now, it's no secret that Orlando has been grappling with personal challenges, but there seems to be a positive shift in his life lately. Earlier this year, he took the initiative to undergo a mental health assessment, and the results have been promising. Recently, Orlando also openly shared that he has been embracing a lifestyle free from substance. Yay! And it appears that he is on the path to well-being. That being said, it appears that Orlando is still struggling with the emotional scars inflicted during his early years in Hollywood. Word on the street is that something shocking happened to Orlando when he was just starting out at Disney and Nickelodeon. And the lingering mental trauma from those experiences remains an ongoing challenge for him. Some fans are even speculating that Orlando's sudden outburst of laughter during interviews is a clear sign he's tormented by something. But on the flip side, you also have a lot of people who are convinced that Orlando is basically playing crazy to protect himself. These folks are saying this is the only way Orlando can spill the truth about Hollywood without facing anything serious. One fan said, for those of you who are lost, watch for patterns. This dude is actually hella smart. He starts talking crazy when certain subjects slash people are brought up. He is speaking the truth, but he disguises it with off the wall sh so that people don't come after him. And someone else added, fun fact, if you play crazy, you can survive as a whistleblower because they know people won't take you seriously. Now circling back to Cat Williams, he claimed on more than one occasion in the past that powers that be in Hollywood tried to ruin him. He initially said he didn't realize that these people would stop at nothing to protect their shady dealings. All the way back in the early 2010s, Cat publicly said he had to stop talking about the rumored secret society that pulls the strings in Hollywood because they were allegedly trying to take him out. In a conversation with Black Tree TV back in 2013, Cat claimed that the constant barrage of negative media stories about him can be attributed, at least in part, to his refusal to align himself with the industry club. According to Cat, his decision to steer clear of this secretive and influential group has led to him becoming a target for dramatic media coverage. Some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them and nobody likes them. Cat even went on to reveal that he was initially oblivious to the risks tied to openly expressing his views against the rumored secret club of gatekeepers. He shared that it took many metaphorical stings or challenges before he fully understood what he was up against. I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. I'm still not gonna join, but I respect it a little more. And then last year after the Oscar slap incident, Cat had folks talking once more when he threw out the idea that the whole showdown between 
between Will Smith and Chris Rock was nothing more than a scripted humiliation ritual. He went on to break it down, pointing out that every little thing you peep on the screen is thought out and orchestrated by the big shots in the industry. Everything that I'm saying that everything that happens in a business that's based off of pretend that seems like a setup is when two large boulders come together and you can't see Chris Rock winning at all, he's humiliated. If you were gonna slap a comedian, he was the number one to slap, head of the coons, so slappable. And if you are gonna slap him, you just need the greatest guy the bestest guy, the one who's shown us him being on his best behavior since the 90s. That guy is the one that will have to slap him in order for the type of ratings we need and attention to be on this thing. But of course, it was during his viral appearance on Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay, that Kat really turned up the heat and started naming names of all the industry people who allegedly sold their souls for fame and money and tried to sabotage him on the low. From Diddy and Kevin Hart, Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, Tiffany Haddish, Ludacris, Ricky Smiley, Kat had words for everyone, and he wasn't talking in riddles and metaphors either. Instead, he directly accused these people of being jokes stealers and bootlickers for the industry bosses. And to add another layer to just how dark and sinister the comedy world is, Kat also claimed that fellow comedian Wanda Smith tried to set him up to get eliminated just because he was doing his job and made some jokes about her during their viral spat on the Frank and Wanda in the morning show back in 2018. I'm not the right one to Get this inmate out of here. If, if, if you can't get your blood pressure down, you can't call me that. Whatever, little mama. If your cholesterol is 600. Whatever, little mama. I'm little mama's baby daddy. No, you little mama. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey, and what are you, girl? <laughs> you probably shouldn't talk about sizes. No, that's okay. You big on the radio. That's right. And you're and you're big. Turn in it prison. down. And you're yes, big in prison. I've never been to prison. Uh, you have. Nineteen felonies, times. no convictions. Yeah. Knock yeah. it off. Prison okay. and jail aren't the same. No, no. Okay. According to Kat, shortly after he checked Wanda on air, Wanda sent her husband and son after him, and the husband confronted him with a. As per the police report, Wanda's husband admitted he chased after Kat, but he straight up denied Flash in the heat, swearing up and down that he accidentally dropped his piece while running. But TMZ later dropped exclusive security footage, and there he was, Wanda's hubby, packing heat and hot on Kat's trail, chasing him right into a nearby grocery store. What's even more messed up is that, according to Kat, that whole showdown between him and Wanda on her radio show wouldn't have happened if she hadn't blindsided him with questions about his children and his past run-ins with the law. Kat told Shannon Sharp that before the interview started, Wanda gave him her word she wasn't gonna dig into his legal mess or mention his kids. But Wanda, seemingly eager to put Kat on blast, went against her word and threw shade by bringing up his kids and his jail time. She has a conversation about, okay, now, I just want to talk to you because you just want an Emmy for the city of Atlanta, and this is in Atlanta, and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on. Right. Okay. And we won't talk about your kids. We won't talk about jail, no cases. We ain't going to talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me because you're an inferior comedian. I'm going to destroy you, and I'm never going to call you out of your name. I'm never going to say anything disrespectful to people that look like you. I'm, I'm, it's a very thin line I got to call, but this lady is trying to embarrass me in front of a largely homosexual fan base. And after all this, Wanda still had the nerve, the audacity, the gall to send her husband after Kat. I guess it just goes to show what envy and jealousy will do to people. Because I didn't even know any of the stuff that she had done to my fellow comedians until after. Afterwards. I just know she that it was a setup. Right. And and, and remember, they they tried to kill me this same weekend, not in jokes, with a real in my real face on real camera. Understand, I'm losing my life for participating in something that goes along with my job. Like, just two comedians. What do you mean? And, and the world was okay with it because it was me. Had that happened to anyone else, the world went crazy when Will smacked, smacked Chris. This is a person pulling a whole 
on a comedian in the confines of their job. It's, a, it's really a weird situation. Uh, when they hate you that bad. So as you can see, Kat didn't just wake up one day and decide to blast his fellow comedians for no reason at all. It seems there have been repeated attempts to eliminate him, literally. And all this just because he wouldn't play by the rules laid out by the shadowy figures who control this whole entertainment industry. Now, if you ask Orlando Brown, something serious must have happened to Kat that prompted him to publicly call out all these people. And he suggested that this shady business has been going on in the comedy world ever since we lost the great Richard Pryor. What was done to Cat to make him do that? There's a lot of people that have no respect for the game of comedy. And there's a lot of people that, now, what, before I go deeper, I will say that I don't, that I, I, it's none of my business, the personal relationships, and all the stuff that I was talking about. So I'm not gonna talk about that. But I do understand that uh, the comedy world is nothing to play with. And since, you know, Richard Pryor left us, God rest his soul, it's more like, you know, everybody's trying to be Richard Pryor, you know, and, and I can't put myself in position to not understand why some people just don't have the, the kind of respect for Kat that they should have. Orlando then recalled witnessing one scene at Kat's house where Kat told Kevin Hart's ex-wife Tori exactly what Kevin allegedly had to do in order to climb the fame ladder. And I will talk about what I've experienced. And what I've experienced is sitting in front of Cat Williams at his own house, $3 million mansion in Malibu. And this man told Tori Hart exactly what Kevin Hart did. Kevin been pissing off a lot of people, you know, comedically, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think that instead of trying to bash somebody that knows what they're talking about and bash somebody that has respect in the, com the, the, the comedy world, I think that they need to look deeper into why is he letting this information go. Now, once again, some people are dismissing all this and saying Orlando is either mentally unwell or high out of his damn mind. But it looks like these people are outnumbered by those who are convinced Orlando knows exactly what he's doing. And they believe this is the only way for him to tell the truth about the industry and continue breathing. Someone said people don't realize he has put a character on this entire time so he can safely deliver the message. Those who know, know. If y'all think he's crazy, then nobody worries about him. And someone else added, it's been crazy that it took for Kat to come out with his interview for me to realize Orlando ain't crazy. He just knows how to speak in a way that protects him. But let me know how you feel about Orlando's interview and his comment on Cat Williams. Do you think Orlando is really putting on a crazy act to protect himself? Comment down below and then click on this next video.